and then okay, good. Um, okay, quickly let, um, let's look at um, uh, the next match between uh, let's let's look at the match between Ghana and uh, Cape Verde. We all know Cape Verde and where they are coming from, and also they they were, they were want, want a surprise package of the Nations Cup at a certain point in time when they uh, appeared in the Nations Cup for the first time, and people took that for granted. Um, what do you expect the Ghanaians to do to avert what happened last time was against Comoros uh, in the group they were in the, in, in, in Arcon 2022, which Senegal won? We all know the, the disastrous outcome they had. They only redeemed themselves by beating the Nigeria Super Eagles to qualify for the World Cup. Now, going into this tournament, if you look at the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian <laughs> if you look at the Ghanaian, uh, uh, side, you look at the stars that they have, the likes of um, Mohamed Kudus, the IU brothers, the Mensas, and then um, uh, and a host, a whole, a host a lot of other players that play their plight, virtually all, all of them play their plight in Europe. Um, how do you think uh, uh, the current manager of of, um, of of Ghana should approach this match? Because knowing fully well that for me, I think the Ghanaians are shipping a lot of goals defensively. So, if as they are shipping a lot of goals, do you think that they should they, they could they could uh, they could avert they could avert uh, themselves being knocked out of the group of the group stage? Yes, for the Ghanaians, I think they should be able to step out of that group. But my problem still remains their goal scoring. In order to solve their goal-scoring problems ahead of the 2022 World Cup, they were able to draft in a certain Naki Williams into the team. But it really hasn't gelled. That, it hasn't brought out the best results. They've been grappling and grappling and grappling results all along. But even then, one thing that has been working for them has been their defense. In their last five matches, they kept four clean sheets. And, it's good, and that is good ratings because they've actually played teams. Unfortunately, in all of those matches, they've only been winning. The ones they won, it has just been one nil, one nil. So that has been the problem. How do they score goals? Even in the last half con, they actually didn't have the worst tournament, but the problem was just that they couldn't score. And he came back to haunt them. Well, so, that's what I'm saying. They, they have a very good defense now coming into this tournament. So how are they actually going to be able to balance defense and attack? We keep saying in the Super Eagles, our problem is that we score, our, our strength is that we score a lot. But our problem is that we also concede too much. But right now, the problem should be, for, yes, the problem should be now for the, the problem should be now for the um, Ghanaians. How do they actually score their own goals? Because at the moment now, they, are, they, can, they, can be, they should be able to see in some matches. For tomorrow's match, I expect them to keep a clean sheet. But how do they score goals? I think the problem with Hoxton, he has just refused to evolve. Just why, why so many countries have actually evolved in their national team, the Ghanaians have just refused to evolve. I don't see any reason why a day they should be in that team. Day day for all is what is still up to today, is still looking for a club. Almost five months of inactive football, and yet he's still called up and definitely will still be a starter. We've seen um, Jordan Ayu, apart from the last two, three months, or last two months now, he has, he has been in the worst form. You can never think of for a centre forward. Thank God he's getting back into his prime. Good thing Naki is now in the team. He's having a very good tournament. Everybody knows that. But going forward, how does this team evolve? You mentioned the certain Mohamed Kudus. Least three midfielder. I think um, that's the midfielder man you should have bought instead of going to buy the Anthony, your coach, sensationally bought. But oh, be that as it <laughs> may, <laughs> this, team is, this team is balanced. Defensively, they are okay. But now what where I see them having issues is what how to put that ball in the net. If teams sit back against this Ghanaian team, you are likely going to see a lot of drab matches, 0-0, 1-0. Normally, it's not too much because that's actually what we experience in Africa. So many matches with very low scoring, with very low scores. But for the Ghanaian team, I think that should be the basic problem that Chris Hudson should try to subtle. Who is going to be the goal scorer, goal scorer for this team? Who do we walk to? Who do we hope to move to? 
And if Inaki Williams can actually find the scoring boats and actually come with it to the to the Nations Cup, I believe he should be the go-to man. Then, then with good assistance from Mame Kudus and Co, they should be fine. For tomorrow's match, I expect them to win, but narrowly, very narrow, narrowly. Yes. Actually, the Cape, the Cape Verdeans are one of the teams I'm most impressed about in Africa at the moment. They don't have extraordinary players in them. You go to their team and you just, you just see players mostly from the Portuguese second, second division. But what do you see? They know each other in total. A blend of very skillful football, blend of attacking football. They know where they are straight line and they don't try to do anything otherwise. They are very good technically. On the ball, you see you see brilliance between individual players, and that has worked for them. In last tournament, they got they got to the, they got out of their group. The previous tournament got out. In fact, now they are now perennial qualifiers for the Nations Cup, where big teams are finding it difficult to qualify. Cape Verde easily gets to the Nations Cup, and that is what we call progression in football. They've been able to progress to a place now that you don't see them as a minnow against a big team like Ghana. Normally, normally when you see Ghana, you see Cape Verde, you just say, ah, it should be a stream role. But it's not more any, it's not like that anymore. If the Mozambicans can, if the uh, sorry, the Cape Verdeans can actually get, get themselves going, I see them actually getting something of that match. Especially with the fact that the uh, the Guardians are having problems scoring goals, so that should actually count. But the problem still remains. The the Ghanians are very good defensively. You can't take that away from them. The defensive mix of Amate, but very good to defend defenders on their day. And if they can come to the party, they should be fine. If they can come, they they can come to the party, they should be fine. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. They're going to get a shot. No, nah, even if they are going to That's lose, I don't see them losing, I don't see them losing scandalously, especially to this Ghanaian team. I don't see them losing scandalously. Okay, John. Uh, okay, John. Uh, nice uh, it's nice having you. Um, Thank you. Um, we hope that uh, we hope that all the conditions come in. A win for Ghana. A win, win for Ghana. A win for yes, yes. A narrow, very narrow win for Ghana, actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. See you. We'll see you. See you soon. Soon. Yeah. Hope to see you too. Thank you.